What is up, beautiful people? You look absolutely fabulous. Yes, fabulous. And I know I look fabulous. You don't got to tell me. I know I look good. I'm probably the sexiest thing that's been on this TV or this computer screen you're looking at all day. Stop playing. God, I love myself. No, I'm just playing. Um, well, I actually woke up feeling really, really good this morning um, because I started going to bed on time, so that helps. And uh, uh, all night, crack cocaine binges didn't help either. I did not do crack. I stopped smoking weed a long time ago, too. But um, one thing that I wanted to talk about today, I guess, is coming out as a black gay man. Um, now, I don't know if you're watching this because you are black and gay and out and just wanted some other perspectives on it, or stories or opinions. I don't know, perhaps you're in the closet with this turned down very, very low with your ear up to the speaker or either your parents aren't home, you know, and if you are parents in the house, it's something you need to tell them. No. Um, and my voice cracked like crazy right then. And then maybe you might not be gay. You know, maybe you have friends or, you know, something like that. Or you might not know anything about it at all. But <clears throat> I did want to talk about it. Um, I have been completely out of the closet now for, uh, I guess, about two or three years. And anyone who knows me now um, finds that hard to believe that I was ever in the closet because, uh, you know, now I live very happy, happily. I live very openly, you know. I don't walk around with a big uh, flag on my head, but I do have my flag right here. I keep a flag in my room, okay, you know. This is a safe haven for the gays, okay. Um... But coming out as a black gay anything, whether you're a black gay man, whether you're a black gay woman, and especially if you're transgender, can definitely yield challenges, you know, to that individual's life. Now, some people that I know have come out and found broad acceptance. Some people who I know have come out and they met lots of turmoil and stress and anxieties and angers. You know, and a lot of people have been excommunicated from their families. Some people have lost friends. Some people have lost jobs. And it's not easy. So coming out is one thing because being in the closet is not necessarily down low. And a lot of people get that mixed up. But to be uh, in the closet is as any gay person can, unless you're like a flaming queen or like a big butch lesbian. Um... I guess you can uh, give off the illusion that you are heterosexual. And, you know, especially in the black community, we subscribe to more of a don't ask, don't tell type of thing, you know. Um, and that's in some areas, among some people. And then some people are completely, completely content or, or open to the idea of someone being able to express um, what their life is as a as a gay person because a lot of times because I, again I'm very open you know I'll be um, out at the grocery store or something like that and talking to somebody and I'll be like boyfriend or that boy is cute or you know one of those type of things um, and they'll be like oh yes honey I love you all that type of thing and then some people are just like oh okay you know well good this and they'll talk to me um, but coming out is uh, really hard sometimes. I came out in 2004 the first time, actually. Um, <clears throat> this girl who I'd known, and I had tried to be straight and everything, but this girl who I'd known, she had um, outed me to my mother. She called my mother one day when I was out, and she told my mother, she said, uh, you know, Samson is gay. He has a boyfriend at his school, and they have sex. And we weren't having sex. I didn't have sex until I was about 18 or 19. And this was when I was about 17. And so, you know, um, and I would definitely share that whole video with you in another, uh, that whole story with you in another video. But um, it's like I was scared because my mother called me on, this, on my phone and I was out with my best friend and she was like, Samson! And I was like, yes. Why are you screaming? I'm not going to say the girl's name, but 
she called me and told me that you're a homosexual and that you had sex with boys and that you love boys and this type of thing. And I'm like, she's like, are you a homosexual? And I'm like, bring your ass home. Like, she was just like, come on home. And so I had to go home. And when I say that was the quickest ride home ever, I mean, I got on the Metro, and if any of you live in D.C., have ever been to D.C. before, you know Metro can really suck. And, I mean, every train was coming because I was at Union Station. The red line was coming. I went downstairs, and um, the green line was coming. And then I got off the Metro, and the bus was coming. So, and I mean, no red lights. And I was like, oh, my God, she is going to kill me. And um, I got to my house, and I just stood there for a second because I was, I was really scared. And I went and I rang the doorbell and I heard uh, my mother, like most black women, has a chain lock on her door. And I just heard the little chain lock. And she opened the door and she stood behind the door and opened it. Um, and I kind of eased in because I just knew a baseball bat would come around the corner and crack me upside the head. And she closed the door, kind of like Penny's mother on Good Times. And I was about to run in the room, you know, and have the door. Uh, be locked on me, but um, she actually turned around and she did me like this. Um, and she had made all kinds of dinner, and I mean, she just made all kinds of food fried chicken and gravy and pork chops and everything. And um, I was smelling the food, I was like, Well, maybe she poisoned me, you know. Um, but she just sat down with me and she talked to me. And um, at that point in time, I can tell she was kind of bothered by it. But, you know, she still, she talked to me, and she definitely expressed lots of love to me. And if she didn't do it verbally, even the food did it very well. Um, and she thought that that would be uh, just a phase for me. And so she still addressed me um, as if I was heterosexual, you know, um, she was just like, um, you know, this is something that will pass. When are you going to get a girlfriend, that type of thing. So it's definitely something that she thought was just a nightmare, and that's something that a lot of people, I'm sure white people do it too, and other cultures treat it as if, you know, it's just a passing tribulation in life. You know, you owe bills, um, you know, uh, someone's sick or something. So they take it, and they're just like, well, this person that I love is gay. And maybe this will pass too, but they don't understand that it's really something that's inside of you. Um, so, I know I'm clearly running out of time, but make sure you subscribe because I'm going to do another video on this. Um, and I definitely think that this is something that a lot of people need to hear about. Um, because I talk to a lot of people who say they don't know anyone gay or haven't talked about it. You know. Um, but subscribe. And definitely be on the lookout for part two. I wish I could keep going, but I got to shut up and change outfits.